just about to wrap up Revelation chapter 20 just a couple more chapters and this book is done didn't know that I would uh, read this chapter or do this study today uh, but last night I was um, reading up on Deuteronomy chapter 15 and so let me read that first as it kept me kept me up Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I ask that this study would be anointed, that you would speak, that your word would do as you say and not return void that it will do exactly what it was set to accomplish, your will, that we would understand our purpose in you, that we would understand and have the strength to be obedient towards you, that we would stand up for what is right, that we would desire the things that you desire in our own lives. That our greatest desire would be for your will to come to pass at all costs. May your will be done. May your name be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So I was reading uh, Deuteronomy chapter 15. Talks about debt cancellation, generosity to the poor, the law concerning bond servants, the law concerning firstborn animals. The part that appealed to me, the part that was tugging in my heart was the generosity to the poor. And I'm going to read verses 7 through 11. And I know the topic here is, is how we deal with the poor. Um, but I took a close look into just the voice of God when I read the scripture here. And his character, his character is shown in his own commandments and I think that is an amazing thing so picking it up from verse uh, 7 down to verse 11 if there is among you a poor man of your brethren within any of the gates in your land which the Lord your God is giving you you shall not harden your heart nor shut your hand from your poor brother but you shall open your hand wide to him and willingly lend him sufficient for his need whatever he needs beware lest there be a wicked thought in your heart saying the seventh year the year of release is at hand and your eye be evil against your poor brother and you give him nothing and he cry out to the Lord against you and it become sin among you you shall surely give to him and your heart should not be grieved when you give to him because for this thing the Lord your God will bless you in all your works and in all to which you put your hand for the poor will never cease from the land therefore I command you saying you shall open your hand wide to your brother to your poor 
in your needy in your land. And the reason why I came to this passage, especially the last verse, verse 11, for the poor will never cease from the land. Therefore, I command you saying, you shall open your hand wide to your brother, to your poor and your needy in your land. That Jesus, it, it was a cross reference to um, the verse of the day yesterday. Um, in the book of of John, in the book of John, um, in chapter twelve, if I remember correctly, and verse eight. Let me see. So, Mary was putting fragrant oil on Jesus' feet. And and in verse 4, it starts in verse 4, but one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? This, he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box and he used to take what was put in it. In verse seven, it says, but Jesus said, let her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. For the poor you have with you always, but me, you do not have always. Amen. And uh, so the cross reference verse uh, to that was back in Deuteronomy. And I was like reading deeper into it. I'm like, wow. The Lord, you know how he hears our cries. Um, but when we cry out to God against someone who's harming us, it doesn't have to be about finances. It doesn't have to be. But it could be about anything that makes us feel poor. Perhaps the poor in heart. Perhaps um, anyone just that is offending us that causes us to cry out to God. Now in context, obviously, this is talking about the poor and needy. But I'm talking about the Lord's character that could be applied into all circumstances. And I see how God cares. He cares for those who cry out to him. Well, we're not just crying out to mama, papa. You know, we're not crying out to anyone else we are crying out to God when we cry out to God he hears our cries but if that cry is against someone he will count its sin against that person and so um, that really touched my heart because you know we hear we read the Lord hears our cries sometimes we don't really see how deep he truly hears how deep he truly grieves for his sons and daughters who love him and so i'm going to start reading revelation chapter 20. then i saw an angel coming down from heaven having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand he laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. And I saw thrones and they sat on them and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. But the rest 
of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now when the thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog, Magog, to gather them together to battle, whose number is at, as the sand of the sea. They went up on the breath of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it. And death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Exactly my meditation this morning or all night was, you know, God is loving he's merciful he's full of grace he's also righteous and just and faithful and he's faithful he's faithful to those who love him and he's not going to change his character for anyone he is who he is he's the I am he's a he's a beginning and and the end the first and the last the Alpha and the Omega before him there was none after him there is none and so we don't want to anger God and sometimes we may be angry at God and and I think just the fact that we are acknowledging him, the fact that we are seeking him, the fact that we are struggling with him like Jacob struggled with him, he likes that. It brings us closer to him, even though it doesn't feel like it. But to not acknowledge him, to not consider him to not think of him to not meditate on him and his word to not care for his own that grieves his spirit that's one thing i don't want to do is grieve god and we know that even if those who offend us in this life if we don't see if we don't see what we would consider just to occur for God to perform and to have vengeance over our enemies we can at least be rest assured that it doesn't matter whether it's in this life 
or not. Um, God is just. And we can worship him just on him being just. What more for his love? How can he be so just and so loving? And so my prayer today is, Lord, I ask that you make our hearts cling onto yours, that we would desire the things that you desire in our own lives. That it wouldn't require, hopefully, too much heartache and pain, but that we would learn quickly what we need to do, what we need to perform, what is our part of the deal. That we would walk in a manner that's worthy of our calling, that you would be well pleased with our faith and our walk in you. That you would look at us as a father to an infant, as a mother to her infant, with a precious, sweet, proud look, that we would make you proud, Lord. And for the times that we fall short, that You would come through and you would you would make things happen in and through us. I pray, Lord, that your will would be done, that you would be glorified in our works, that we would be made one spirit in our hearts and our desires in our minds that we would have your mind that we would have your heart that we would focus so much on you that the distractions that are meant to stray us away from you would not be successful That we would live every second, every minute of the the day to worship you, to be at your feet in everything that we do, in loving you and loving one another. That we would aim harder and deeper still. Every day we would do better. Every day we would spend more time worshiping you. Every day our worship would be more constant concentrated in you and focused on you and I thank you God for when I ask for you to send your angels to minister to me you don't have to answer those prayers but you do Thank you, Lord, for the discernment that you give me to know when someone is sent from above or when your spirit is to the fullness in someone who ministers to me. And Lord, I ask that you would use me to, that I would work alongside with my brothers and sisters and with the angels to fulfill your purpose for your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven and it is in Jesus name that I pray and I give thanks for you already 
handling every worry, every desire, every request before I could ever speak it out of my mouth. I thank you, Lord, for taking all these matters upon yourself before I would ever imagine there to be a matter at all. May you be glorified in all things, in the praise reports, in the trials, in every imaginable thing that we can see, touch, smell, hear, observe, just just how much you are God and how much we are just so small and so humbled to be a child of yours but yet elevated as it's an honorable position to be in to be a son or daughter of God so I thank you for giving us honor too and I ask that you would impute your character in us that we would become more like you. That we would be more observant every day of how we could do better in worshiping you by our actions, by being slow to speak, quick to hear, slow to wrath and anger, being patient and loving, and producing good fruit. Prune us, Lord. Wash us with your word. Fill us with your spirit. In Jesus' name I 